Peter's call, and we'll take a few minutes for questions. Okay. Sorry. presentation um, is put together around the conference theme of um, local uh, services uh, artic articulating into global services uh, and we have a number of institutions represented. Uh, we're going to talk about architectural changes uh, as we move from the first round of institutional repositories uh, to the more modern um, research data repositories where um, a lot of the effort in Australia is going at the moment. Uh, Okay, so the, the first round of institutional, institutional repositories are actually very like the libraries that, um, that house them. This is the local national library, and uh, inside, I'm sure there's quite a lot of paper, uh, and inside of institutional repositories we have lots of PDF files, which are actually not substantially different um, in character from the paper that we keep in, um, in libraries. Uh, the institutional repositories in the early days were much like this um, monolithic um, container here, uh, you can put things into them. It's not necessarily a roach motel, as Dorothy Asala would have it. Uh, you can get things out. Uh, but the point I wanted to make here is that they were actually a, a single container in the early days. And things have moved on in publications repositories. Uh, we now have lots more services. Libraries are opening coffee shops um, and becoming more engaged with social media. Anna pointed out that there should be a banner on the National Library that says, win an iPad, uh, because that's a, one of the main things that libraries uh, offer now. <laughs> Uh, so, coming to the sort of the Australian context, there's been a lot of money. Uh, this is money, uh, <laughs> is money um, that's been put into the Australian uh, research sector. So, we, we every Australian university has a, an institutional repository because the government helped fund it, and they're now focusing on data. The money is a bit fragmented, but it keeps coming. Um, so, the lessons learned, we know from the, the original institutional repositories that we, we didn't turn out to be that good at standardisation. We have six different rail gauges in Australia, maybe more depending on how you count, just for trains. Um, and we have probably a lot more than that um, when you talk about the way people use their metadata inside repositories. So as we build new services like this one, this is Research Data Australia, which is a, a discovery service for research data as opposed to publications. We want to, as a community, we're trying to make sure that we improve the quality of metadata that's coming into these services. And the money that's being invested by the government is going towards that. So the Australian National Data Service um, have, instead of just letting people sign up, they actually have gatekeepers. Um, I hope they're more effective than this um, stuffed um, armour here. Uh, but they, uh, there are actually checks before people can sign up to the Research Data Australia. There is some effort made to make sure that people are using consistent metadata. We have investment across the sector in things like this, uh, this project here. Um, Natasha Simons here, is, is here at this conference, is writing a blog as part of a, a government funded project to help advise the community about how to provide high quality meta, metadata about research data. So there's a lot of effort in these new open repositories on that. The other thing that we're doing is, you can't absorb all of this in 20 seconds, but the thing to look at here is that it's complicated. When we drew pictures of our original publications repositories, they didn't have this much sort of external engagement. The green stuff is talking to other services apart from the library inside the university. This is one of the main points we want to make that um, as we, and this is, this is, the previous one was from the Redbox Research Data Catalogue. This one's from a thing called Vivo, which is what Melbourne um, University uses. And again, the, the thing to watch here is that there's a lot of interconnection and complexity and there are a lot of stakeholders and we're engaging much better now with those stakeholders we think than we did in the early days of the publications repositories. Um, I'm contractually obliged to show you a picture of my dog. Um, and the point here is that when we name parties like the dog, um, we're using URIs now. We're starting to use URIs. This is a very key way that we're improving the quality of metadata and we're opening up lots of um, opportunities to do much more with the things that are in repositories. Another thing, this is what this is contributed by the Melbourne University people, uh, is that 
We're very um, f focused now on making sure that when we have repositories and collections of data, that we are providing faceted views of this uh, appropriate to different audiences. So we have researcher views, administrative views, library views uh, of, this, of the data. We have uh, a large emphasis on automating the harvest of data. The original publications repositories were focused on self-deposit where people would put things in individually. We know they've moved on to much more industrial harvesting processes for publications. And the same thing is happening for data. So that's one of the big trends. Now we have, um, you probably experienced this data deluge uh, here, particularly a few days ago. Um, as we have the data coming down on us, we have, we're using these industrial harvesting processes and all of the information we're gathering from the connections we've made with the rest of the university to channel it. So the plumbing, as the, as the, as the data falls down, and we, we, um, we, we channel it into uh, appropriate buckets because we've actually got this um, lots of metadata that means we can automate uh, the processing of the data. That said, we still have um, the need to have some hand curated data and to um, make sure that we actually look after. Uh, we have running away with me now, 27 things are working very well. Um, moving on to this, this thing here, Eagle Eye. This is where we're going to head as we start with um, you, naming things with, with URIs. We're going to start to drill down from the collection level descriptions of things down into the, um, deeper into the, um, the data so that we can actually start to engage with uh, the contents rather than just a metadata level view of what's happening. <coughs> Where are we going? Well, we're going slowly forwards along the trends that I've been talking about, improved, working slowly to improve the quality of metadata. And this is um, picking up on what Cameron Nalan said yesterday. Um, we, we expect the future to be quite linked um, and networked. It might not be as pretty as we thought things might look 10 years ago, but the result of using these uh, names, URIs as names, and, and the consent of the community of bringing together all the different stakeholders will give you that highly linked view. Yeah, it's great fun in this kind of presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, take a quick break just for questions if anyone has any questions on the first three presentations there. <coughs> No questions? That makes life nice. And oh, there is a question. Um, Peter, does your dog really have a URI? It does. <laughs> it's on the screen there. <laughs> His name's not Spot. 